Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining. And for those who are watching online, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you for tuning in. And for those who are attending in person, congratulations. This is the last session of this event. You did it. What a week. I had so much fun. It's so nice to see people in person. And I know so many people are working hard behind the scene to make this happen. So I want to thank all of the people who worked for this event, especially Linux Foundation team, production team who is live streaming right now, and speakers. Let's give them applause. My name is Teresa Terasaki, and I'm a program manager at Google, leading brand experience and events in the open source programs office. I have been in Google for almost 10 years now and have experienced three different orgs, sales, marketing, and now engineering. Today, I'm going to talk about what we learned supporting open source during the pandemic. Before we dive in, I would love to share my passion first. I love exploring new restaurants. My Instagram feeds are all about food. My favorite place in San Francisco so far has been Flower and Water. Their pasta tasting menu is outstanding. This week, I tried Umisake House in downtown Seattle with my team. Has anyone here ever been before? No? Oh, yeah, all of them from our team. Um, it's a Japanese spot for sushi, zakaya style snacks, and sake. Apologies if I made you hungry. Dinner time is almost ready. And Umisake House is 15 minutes walk away from here if you would like to try out tonight. Enough about my restaurant recommendation. Let's get back to the main topic. At Google, open source is at the core of our infrastructure, processes, and culture. As such, participation in these communities is vital to us. Google manages over 9,000 public repos on GitHub and over 1,500 on Git on Borg. We originated open source projects including Android, Flutter, Chromium, TensorFlow, Kubernetes, Go, Istio, Knative, gRPC, Apache Beam, and more. To support this project within Google, Christy Bona, who spoke at Keynote yesterday, founded the Open Source Programs Office in 2004. We have helped Google use and release open source code, as well as support the sustainability for, of open source communities. Over the 17 years of history, the past one and a half years may well have been the most challenging time. The pandemic happened worldwide. A shelter in place order was issued across the world and most of us were stuck at home for a long time. Now let's hear from the audience. How many of you think your productivity improved during the pandemic? Oh wow, that's impressive. <laughs> Next, how many of you think your productivity dropped? Oh, okay, yeah, about the same. I feel the same. We found out that open source projects were heavily impacted as productivity went way down. For example, we saw a 38% drop in daily core committers for Kubernetes projects, and other workloads, uh, workloads dropped as well. On the other hand, corporations are still planning to increase investment in open source. According to the Open Source Program Survey conducted in May 2020, more than 1,000 people in various sizes of companies said that their organizations are creating more open source projects than ever before. Demand is high, but developers are struggling. To support those developers, several open source teams at Google took action. Today, I would like to take you through our journey, what we have been doing and what we have learned. 10 days after pandemic happened, our Go team published a blog post to support their community by sharing job postings, online training resources, a discussion channel, and a help desk. 
Three months later, our OSPO team published a blog post on what we are doing to help the community. During the summer, we shifted our Google-wide internship program to focus on open source projects so that 1,000 interns could still work from their home with limited corporate access. They contributed to open source projects as well as COVID-19 response efforts. Three months after work from home start started, we asked developers what they were looking for. We learned that virtual events were the most popular channel for developers to stay up to date on open source projects. But we had one problem. Audience momentum was not good. People were fed up with virtual meetings, webinars, being stuck at home. So we needed to change the momentum from virtual fatigue to virtual fun. I know, it was good old days. In-person events are so much fun. Let's hear from the audience. Is there anyone who would like to share what you missed the most about in-person events? Anyone? Yeah. Free food, yeah. Yes, that's the best. Yeah, like spontaneous conversation, meeting new people, yeah. When we took a community survey, we saw three main themes. The first theme is interaction. Networking is more efficient. Hallway conversations are organic and spontaneous. For some people, all of the team members are remote, so events are the only opportunity for them to meet in person. The second theme is experience. You can feel energy, emotion, and excitement, and you can also explore a new country or city. And of course, there is a swag and after party, free food. The third theme is practicality. You can interact with experts and get help on projects. We took this learning and tried to apply these elements to our virtual events. We had to launch something quickly. So we looked inside of Google to find existing resources we could use. We have engineers across the company who are working on open source projects. We also have ready to use virtual platform like YouTube live stream and Google Meet. So we decided to combine these three and create a virtual community hub. This is what we launched in September last year. Please welcome Google Open Source Live. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for joining Apache Beam Day on Google Open Source Live. And finally, we'll just make some minor modifications to the code. I'm adding a hello handler function. With that, it's time for the after party. Google Open Source Live is a monthly live event series that developers can get together and learn from open source experts. Each event includes four sessions and a Q&A. We finish with an after party or Google Meet so that attendees can connect with the speakers directly and have some fun with other developers. When we launched the Community Event Hub, we wanted to focus on three key values, real time, interactive, and accessible, real time, to liven things up and engage the audience. There is no going back, no playback function until the event ends. So this helps create an engaged and focused audience. Interactive, we have a Q&A live wall below the live stream window so that the audience can ask questions during the presentation. Sessions are pre-recorded so that the speakers can focus on answering those questions live. At the end, we conclude the event with an after party with a DJ, a face drawing artist, quizzes, and prize giveaway. Finally, accessible. All the sessions are pre-recorded four weeks in advance so that we can add human-generated captioning. 
to make them accessible to the deaf, deaf, hard of hearing, blind, low vision, developmentally disabled, and neurodivergent communities. Captioning is also beneficial for non-native English speakers. We also published guidelines for virtual event uh, accessibility so that other open source community members can pr uh, plan an accessible event. Because this event is online, there are no geographical restrictions. Anyone can join from anywhere in the world. We set the event time at 9 a.m. Pacific so that the majority of our EMEA audience and some APAC can join live. If the time doesn't work for them, they can watch the recording later. We recently started to translate the sessions to some local languages, including Spanish, Japanese, and Chinese. We add subtitles and voiceover. And voiceover is done by our internal volunteers, including myself. I'm doing Japanese voiceover, if you're ever here. These are some examples of top popular activities. LiPo and WordCloud are interactive tools to increase audience engagement. We also invite a face drawing artist to every event. Lucky winners can receive a digital copy of their drawing. If you want to win the face drawing, you have to turn your camera on. This will encourage the audience to join in the conversation and create the community vibe. Gamification is a great way to increase audience engagement too. We conduct quizzes related to each live stream session and give away a prize to quiz winners. During and after the events, we saw lots of attendees sharing the experience on Twitter and Slack channel. We saw positive comments, especially around the event's interactive components. And we learned that the audience loved taking screenshots of themselves next to a speaker on Google Meet. We provide special virtual backgrounds for speakers so that the audience can spot them easily on Google Meet. We received great comments from attendees. Quote, the live event was surprisingly great experience today. A couple of hours of a curated, insightful, and well-prepared talks. Interesting and helpful format. End quote. We have hosted 12 events over a year with attendees from 107 countries and have achieved a 4.5 out of 5 satisfaction score, which is quite high for an online event. 57% of attendees were new learners, and the rest were either contributors or using it in production. If you are free next Thursday, please join us for the October event, Open Source Productivity Day on October 7th, at 9 a.m. Pacific time. I will take a moment so that people can take a picture. Thank you. Over the past 12 months, we have been trying out new ideas and keep pivoting. We have learned a lot from this experience and I would like to share our six key learnings. Learning one, your personal life matters. The pandemic impacted developers' personal life. They may not have a private workspace. They may have their children at home. For some people, work is not their priority anymore. So we had to step back and think how we can help them as individuals. One of the actions we took was sending out the care package to our contributors. Each item was carefully curated and sourced from local brands and contained something to help them enjoy their work from home. This year, we wanted to send out something people can enjoy outside, so we curated picnic items. One of the contributors who received the package told us that he was in a low point when he received the package. His wife was suffering from COVID-19. He posted a picture of the care package on Twitter with a comment, quote, this is what I needed today, end quote. Learning to accommodate everyone. We learned from attendees survey that 62% of developers prefer in-person events 
However, 38% of them still prefer virtual events. It was good learning for us that we have to find a way to accommodate those who prefer virtual events. More and more events are moving to a hybrid model, and we have to make our event fully global. You may want to host three events in three different time zones, including Americas, APAC, and EMEA. If an in-person event is happening in Americas, we can live stream the recording in the EMEA and the APAC time zone with local live contents so that they can also enjoy the live feeling. We may want to create a separate chat room by region so that virtual attendees can talk to each other during the live stream. If we are distributing SWAC at an in-person event, we may want to consider shipping to online attendees also. We may want to set up a live cam on site so that online attendees can talk to in-person attendees. We need to compensate for what virtual events are lacking so that online attendees can also get an equivalent benefit. Learning three, sustainability. Travel. Not everyone is willing or able to travel to attend events in person. Some attendees prefer to travel domestically, but not internationally. Some companies may cut their travel budget. Creating an attractive hybrid model can also reduce the event's carbon footprint. Swag. When we make a purchase decision, we also try to keep sustainability top of mind. Some SWAC manufacturers offer a charitable program such as 1% of sales donation to nonprofits to protect the planet. Plastic. We may want to provide a drink bottle as a SWAC and set up a water station at the event so that we can reduce plastic usage. Learning four. If content is king, brand design is a new queen. For virtual event, user touch points are very limited. We teamed up with a design team and created a cohesive brand experience. Shifting to a design-centric event creates a beautiful and fun audience experience. Learning five, internal community is your power source. This year, we hosted an internal summit for open source engineers at Google. The whole day virtual event became the place where our engineers could find out about other open source projects. The audience loved all the connections that came out of the event. People found each other in the chat room. People dropped by virtual office hours to talk to project leads in person, virtually. After this event, communication volumes inside of our company significantly increased. And we could identify our internal needs as well as cross-functional collaboration. Learning six, keep evolving. Especially in this new post-pandemic era, the world is changing quickly. So we have to keep improving every week we look into our workflow, audience needs, learning from the previous event, and come up with new ideas and creative solutions. This process enables our programs to accommodate audience needs in the long term. If you are struggling to foster your community, you are not alone. We will get through this together. We have more team members in this room today. Could you raise your hands if you are from Google? Radha, Ka, Sophia. Oh, I didn't know you were from Google. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, great. If you find your faces in the hallway, please stop us. Let's chat. For those who are joining online, send me a message through the event platform. With that, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for having me today. Does anyone have any questions? No? Great. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the night. <laughs>